you should try to bring as much joint evidence as possible. And officers are actually trained to treat different types of evidence with different types of weight. And the primary type of evidence that they like to see is evidence of your... Hi, this is Mamita Rahman, the immigration lawyer here to help you navigate this complex world of immigration. Are you someone who has filed for a marriage-based green card and you are anxiously waiting for that day that you have your interview in front of an immigration officer where they will pick apart your life and see if your marriage is real? Let me tell you something. I have been to hundreds of marriage-based green card interviews throughout my career, hundreds. And that is including interviews here in New York City where I am based and also in different states. So I have a lot of things to share with you today. But before I go any further, I am an immigration lawyer based in New York and I serve clients all over the U.S. If you like the news that I bring and the content that I talk about, please subscribe to my channel and please hit that notification bell so that you are notified the next time I release a new video. So you have filed your green card application with your husband or with your wife, and now you are waiting. Let's talk about what you should expect during this process. There are a few frequently asked questions that I get when it comes to marriage-based interviews. Number one is how long will it take for me to have my interview? Number two is what will I be asked? And number three is what should I bring with me to my interview? The first question about how long should you expect to wait for an interview is going to be depending on where your interview will be. Now, here's the thing. Your interview will always be at the field office that is based upon where you live. So for example, if your physical address is in Queens, New York, then your interview will be assigned to the Queens field office. So if you move, then technically your interview location should also move with you. This is something that you should keep an eye on. Make sure you filed your change of address form right away as soon as you know that you are going to be moving. And if you and your spouse happen to live in different locations, if your spouse lives in one city or a different state and you live somewhere else, your interview will still be based upon the address where the intending immigrant lives. So it will be based upon where you, the foreign national, are physically located. Now, when it comes to how long to expect for the actual day of interview to arrive, that will then depend on that field office. Naturally, some field offices are more busy than others. For example, here in New York, we are probably one of the most busiest offices for USCIS. And then you have some other smaller field offices that are a lot less busy. Depending on how big and how busy your field office is, that is what will determine how long you will have to wait. For example, there are certain offices throughout the US where you may only wait five or six months for your green card interview. And in other offices, you may be waiting more than a year. It really, really depends on how busy that office is and how many people are already waiting for the interview. So next, what will they ask you at your green card interview? I like to think that the interview questions are divided into roughly three different categories. The first category will be about your relationship. The second category will be about how well the two of you know each other. And the third will be on security and inadmissibility questions. Now, let's talk about the first category of questions. This is the time that you need to know your how we met story. I actually don't care how long you have been together. You and your spouse should be going over the details of when you first met, what your first date was, when it was, and how did your relationship form? Your job through these questions is to basically help the officer understand how your relationship evolves. The officer will ask you questions about the timeline because they will also try to understand how long it took for you to meet and then how long did it take to end up getting married because that may then determine some additional questions that they wish to ask you. And here's my tip to you. No matter how long you have been together, whether you have been together for under a year or whether you have been together for 10 years or more, always, always, always go over your how we met story with your spouse. Naturally speaking, if you've been married for a long time, you already know that your interpretation of events may be different from your husband's or your wife's interpretation. It is imperative for you to sit down, talk about the timeline. When did you first see each other? When was that first date? 
because here's another thing. Everyone's interpretation of a first date may not be the same. Also, if you happen to meet online or through a non-traditional way, your interpretation of when you first met might depend on whether you consider your first meeting, your first online interaction, or your first physical interaction in person. So my hot tip for you today is to make a timeline of when you first met, when you had your first date, and how did your relationship evolve? The officer will also probably ask you questions about what your wedding ceremony was like, who proposed to whom, how did the proposal occur, how did you celebrate after the wedding, and some other natural questions regarding the evolution of your relationship. The second category of questions is typically designed to determine how well you and your spouse know each other. They will usually go down the form to see what questions they can ask from it. So naturally, if the forms that you have submitted provides information about the names of your parents, the names and locations of your employers and where you have lived, the officer may ask you questions about that. However, they may also ask you questions about the names of your siblings, what they do for a living, where they live, some other questions that they might expect you to know. They may also ask you some fun questions such as who does the cooking in the house, who wakes up first, what you guys like to do for fun. These are not always questions that I get at every interview, but some officers do like to ask them. I have also had some fun questions such as name the top three things you like about your spouse or name the top three things you dislike most. So be better, be very careful when you answer those questions. Another hot tip for you, please make sure you know each other's birthdays and your date of marriage. Now, when it comes to the date of marriage, I know that many people out there are possibly having their civil ceremony at City Hall first, and then they decide to have a bigger wedding reception and party. And what I have seen is that a lot of times, couples may consider the second ceremony to be their wedding date. But at the interview, when the officer asks you what your wedding date is, they are actually talking about the date that is on your marriage certificate. So make sure you don't confuse these two dates. Now, the security and inadmissibility questions are actually near the end of your I-485 form, which you as the immigrant had to sign and which you should have already answered. Make sure you go through all of these questions before your interview because there are some officers that do like to ask each of these questions out loud to you. These range from very serious questions to some questions that might sound silly, such as have you ever been a member of the Nazi party or have you ever engaged in prostitution? But these are serious questions that the officer is required to ask of you to make sure that you are otherwise eligible for a green card. So don't laugh and don't get offended. Treat it with as much respect as the officer will be asking you. Now, lastly, what do you need to bring with you to your interview? Now, here is the deal. It is your burden of proof to show that your marriage is real. I don't want you to relax and think that everything will be fine and you don't really need to do anything because why would the government want to question wh whether your relationship is real? But the reality is, is that officers have a serious job in trying to determine if a marriage is fraudulent or not please make sure you treat your interview with seriousness. And part of your job is not just to answer questions, but also to provide documentation. You should try to bring as much joint evidence as possible. And officers are actually trained to treat different types of evidence with different types of weight. And the primary type of evidence that they like to see is evidence of your joint liabilities and your joint assets. So this means joint bank accounts, joint tax returns, joint leases, and anything else that proves that you have combined your finances together. As part of this primary evidence, you can also show certain things such as joint car insurance, health insurance, renter's insurance or home insurance, and anything else that you believe is serious. Now, the second type of evidence that you can bring is secondary evidence, which will include more things such as evidence of trips that you have taken together, cards you have given to each other, and Photographs. Photographs are really important. And my next hot tip to you is to make sure you get a photo album in which you can put your photographs. And you want to have a healthy selection of photographs. You want to show photographs of not just the two of you with each other, but also with family and friends and in a variety of different settings and holidays. You want your photographs 
to paint a picture of your life together for the officer to see. So that's what to expect at your interview. Your interview can take anywhere from 10 minutes long to an hour or more. And honestly, I have had interviews range from those timelines. Your interview and the questions that you get asked are always going to be determined by the officer who gets your case. And every single officer is different. They have their own perceptions, they have their own personalities, and they have their own goals in finding out what sort of information they feel that they need in order to approve or deny your case. Once your interview is done, the officer will usually hand you a piece of paper telling you that your case is being held for review and not to contact them for 120 days because they need a little bit of breathing space to make a decision. Also, some officers who are maybe a little bit more senior in experience may tell you right away that they don't see any problems with your case and that they will approve. However, this is not the norm and I would not expect it. Once your interview has been done, you can expect that you'll receive a decision anywhere from one week to several months later. If you feel like your decision is taking too long, you can always make an inquiry with customer service about why it's taking so long. So that's it. I hope you found this useful and informational. And if you have any questions and need a consultation on your case, give us a call 212-248-7907. I'm Omida Rahman. See you next time. This video is for informational purposes only and does not constitute legal advice. For proper legal advice on your case, please call us to set up a consultation.